If you're creating websites in 2025, you're probably wondering which is the better platform between Webflow, Framework, and WordPress. Now, I've built websites with all of them for multiple different clients and for myself as well. And I'm not here to push one platform over the other because this video is not sponsored. So, let me just say this up front. Each platform has real strengths and some real blind spots that surprisingly nobody wants to talk about. So, this is my honest take based on how these platforms actually feel to work with, how much control you get, and what kind of a person each platform is suited for. Chapter 1, The Page Windows. Let's start with how these tools feel in your hands to actually use. Because if you don't like the building experience, you're probably not going to stick with it. Framer is hands down the easiest for designers to get started with. If you know Figma, Framer feels super familiar. But that simplicity is a trade-off. Framer gives you less control. There's no real CSS logic under the hood. So if you want pixel-perfect responsiveness or advanced animations or effects, you're going to hit a wall sooner or later unless you start using custom code. And even then, the structure makes it hard to use code on specific elements. Webflow is the complete opposite. You're not just placing elements, you're thinking in terms of structure, flexbox, grid layouts, and CSS classes. It's way more complex to learn, but once it clicks, you can really build anything. Think of Webflow as a professional design tool that just happens to be visual. Now, WordPress, it's the largest out of all of these platforms, and it can be whatever you want to do. That's its power and also its curse. You can use builders like Elementor, Bricks, or Breakdance, and some will feel like Framer, others will feel like Webflow. But the experience totally depends on what you choose. It's very flexible, but you need to make decisions upfront and kind of live with those choices. Chapter 2. Content and CMS Now, let's talk about how these platforms handle dynamic content. Logs, directories, portfolios, case studies, stuff like that. Webflow CMS is surprisingly powerful. You define custom content types called collections, create template pages, and your client can edit entries without messing up the design. Framer now has a CMS too, and it's good, but it's not as deep. It's fine for blog posts or portfolios, but anything relational like categories or filtering, it kind of starts to fall apart. WordPress, to be honest, wins this chapter hands down. It was literally built as a CMS, so custom post types, taxonomies, user roles, scheduling, everything is native. Or you can just install a plugin like ACF to get everything to work. And if your site is content-heavy, WordPress is the best choice compared to anything else in the market. But great power comes with great responsibilities, so you'll need plugins like ACF or Metabox to create advanced layouts. And you need to go deep into understanding PHP or hooking into filters. It's powerful, but there can be a learning curve. Chapter 3. Hosting, Maintenance and Security Now here's where the gap really widens. Framer and Webflow are both SaaS tools. You don't worry about hosting, uptime, backups, security, SSL, everything is automatic. That peace of mind is one of the best selling points for beginners. WordPress, on the other hand, is self-hosted, which means you're responsible for everything. Your web hosting, backups, security, updates, performance. It's all on you or your developer. But here's a flip side that not many people talk about. With WordPress, you can host anywhere, customize anything, and scale as big as you want. You're not locked into someone else's pricing, structure, or limitations. And you can install plugins like Malcare, Glowboard, or NF to get CS protection for Malcare, daily backups, and performance optimizations. Chapter 4, Custom Code and Advanced Features. Webflow gives you full control. You can add custom code anywhere. Framer supports custom code too, but it's not as deeply integrated. WordPress is completely open source. You can build anything. So if you're building a complex and custom solution for a business, WordPress is still the winner. Chapter 5, Who Each Platform Is Really For. Alright, so Framer is for designers who want to build beautiful websites fast and don't want to touch code. Webflow is for designers who want more control, a scalable CMS without writing raw code. Now, WordPress is for people who are building more complex or even content-heavy sites and who want more freedom to customize the experience. So here's the simplest way to decide. If you want to build a slightly more custom or complex or content-heavy website, go with WordPress. The freedom that it will give you will help you create the exact thing that you want which the other platform might not. Now, if you hate maintenance, because WordPress does come with maintenance, choose Webflow. And if you hate any kind of complexity and you want an absolute easy experience, choose Framer. All right. Finally, let's talk about pricing. Framer is the most affordable of the two SaaS tools. Personal websites start around $10 per month, but as soon as you need a CMS or go live with multiple client websites, that per site pricing kicks in and it's not going to be comfortable. Webflow is more expensive. The CMS plan is $30 per month per site. 
So if you're managing three or four projects, it starts to add up fast. It looks great, it works great, but it's not cheap if you're building at scale. So yeah, cost-wise, WordPress is way more flexible and scales much better as you keep growing. But I would still say there is no absolutely right or absolutely wrong platform. It's about what you need at this point and what helps you scale up in the next few years. So pick accordingly and comment below if you have a specific doubt and definitely answer that.